My name is Joyce Treasure and I'm going to talk about my artwork and my art practice. But before I do, before I start, I just want to say thank you to uh, Sandra Griffiths of Red Earth Collective and Birmingham Museum Trust for inviting me here to talk about my artwork and to speak with my colleague Ga Gary Stewart and to discuss how the Windrush generation has influenced my practice. So as I've already introduced myself, my name's Joyce Treasure and um, I'm a multidisciplinary artist um, and I'm based here in Birmingham and I came here just over three years ago to embark on a Black Studies degree as a mature student and I emphasise um, mature uh, because it was a degree that was the first of its kind in the UK and uh, in Europe and I decided to take the degree course because it would um, inform my, my practice as my practice is around colonialism and it's also around um, black identity and I, it's taken me a while to, to come to deciding that I'm a multidisciplinary artist because um, I, as when I first started, I described myself as a mixed media artist. Um, and as I've progressed and as I sit today, I've discovered that I've been, you know, that I've used my, my lifelong skills, which are um, jeweler, uh, photographer, uh, prop and set maker. I've also done theatre work and I've also done script writing. Um, and so that's loaned, lo that's loaned itself to my practice. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the multidisciplinary, uh, multidisciplinary embraces multiple artistic activities that um, combine different experimental art forms, which has been, um, it, it, you know, that's, that's something that um, loans itself to my work. So um, I use the, the notions of the carnivalesque to, um, and through a black, I use the notions of the carnivalesque through the black feminist uh, lens and decolonial thought to explore and liberate ideas related to power. Um, and carnivalesque is, um, it's, it's some, it subverts ideas, it flips things on its, on its head. So. Uh, black becomes white, rich becomes poor, um, up becomes down, and etc. etc. Um, and in this piece that I that I that I created in 2016, Equipoise, I was I was um, it was in response to the um, the decision to remove Elizabeth Fry from the five pound from the five pound note and replace her with um, uh, Winston Churchill. And you can see here I've used. Um, I've used a kind of character of 1950s white male character to point to patriarchy and um, he's putting up wallpaper and you can see that Winston Churchill's there on the wallpaper and that will be covering, you know, when we, when we, remove, when we remove Elizabeth Fry, who was, um, you know, a prison reformer and social reformer, who else are we removing at the same time? So on the back of her head you can see there's a... Um, there's a Benin, a Benin uh, bronze sitting on her head. So when we remove, when we when we remove her, who else are we removing from our visuals? And so, I can't really talk more about my practice without discussing. Or I can't really, you know, when we talk about Windrush, um, I I I need to talk about my dad and he arrived uh, in the UK for work in October 1960 and he followed his brother who came in January 1960 and we I was talking to Gary yesterday about this and we were talking about how we can't generalize about Windrush because it's not just the you know the you know the uh, the the dock at Tilbury in 1948 there's a whole period and I've got there's some discrepancy about the dates as well I've got 1948 there to 1968 However, there's you know periods that extend that 
a little bit further. There are some dates that go up to 1971, and some people argue that it's 1958. Um, but he came in 1960. That's Vincent Joseph Treasure, also known as Roy. And he met my mom, um, uh, Mary Elizabeth Treasure, and they married in 1966. And I was born in 1965. Uh, a year and a half later, after they were married, they were separated. So that meant that I could draw on to my, you know, my mixed heritage, my mixed culture. So I had my Jamaican heritage and my British heritage. And when I first began to practice, um, my first my first set of work was uh, these monochrome um, images uh, that were uh, figurative pieces taken from an, a book titled Appear Appearances, um, and which was a fashion photography book dated from 1945 up to around 1970s. Um, and in doing in this kind of uh, you know in replicating these images i was locating my identity in the images where my identity was missing and this particular image that i that i titled afro jazz is an appropriation of an appropriation so anthony armstrong jones also known as lord snowden married to um princess margaret he created this image, and it's a kind of take of a Lindy Hop star dance. So I've kind of re, 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 um, programmed that that image over his image, if you see what I mean. Um, and so moving on, this piece is in is titled Litany, Litany, Litany for those that see, and. Um, it's quite a big, it was a quite a big piece made for uh, an exhibition called Tribe. And it's made up of common prayer book pages, postage stamps of the Queen, and um, is acrylic and, and ink on paper. And this pays homage to enslaved Africans whose lives were lost at sea um, after, during the transatlantic crossing, and also points towards artifacts that were looted by the British when they uh, did their expedition, the Benin expedition, expedition of 1897. Eight, uh, sorry, 1897. Um, this expedition uh, crippled the Kingdom of Benin, which was a monarchy kingdom that, that was founded in 80, uh, sorry, 1180. And it's just to point towards how colonialism has impacted parts of Africa and assimilated. This, this kingdom was assimilated into colonised Nigeria um, later on in life. Uh, so I'm just going to see if I can... Yeah. And then I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about through my, through my work up to current date um, so in 2014, I created this piece, uh, The Girl with a Pearl Earring, and that points towards, the, um, t towards a, a famous painting by Vermeer, uh, which points towards the Dutch Golden Age and the dark side of wealth gained through enslavement. And then the next piece that I, that I created in 2017 is titled Mantle, and um, this is how roles are handed down and responsible responsibilities forwarded, um, and how this conversation is always going through new iterations, and it also points towards the Earth's mantle and its interior mass. And then the other the other image titled untitled rather 2017 is uh, points towards ancestral work, and in that image. Our ancestors are looking back out at the viewer in what's known as the oppositional gaze. And that was um, a term coined by Bell Hooks and written in, coined by Bell Hooks that uh, was written in her essays titled Black Looks Race, Repre Race Representation. And that relates to the pol political rebellion of black persons' rights to look back. Um, and so um, in 2016 my dad passed away 
and I, at the same time, I'd done a DNA test. And a year later, I decided to um, go on a research pil pilgrimage, and I visited uh, these. Uh, these I, I also that was coming up, but Black Studies was coming up on the horizon as a potential um, degree that I could that I could pursue. And this, the, the, the studies, the research studies, the travels became a prerequisite to the, to the black studies. So I started in Jamaica um, and went to Haiti, which uh, Haiti uh, really informs my work, my current work. Um, uh, then I went to New York, Senegal was showing up on my DNA, so I wanted to visit Senegal. I went to Gambia. Ghana and Nigeria was prominent in my DNA resorts and so I wanted to spend time there and then in 2017 I began my black studies course and after so during my black studies I then got invited to participate um, in a show which became a solo show and that was titled our visual cortex or cortex and obscuridad and in that in that piece, I was able to, uh, I was able to experiment with assemblage, which was I'd learnt a lot of those techniques in Haiti, and I made this piece "Gone with the Wind" to point to how, given the location of that film, that the the black agency is loaning itself to stereotypes. And so, what does this signal in in terms of our in our in terms of our learning and what we and what we receive? And then, in 2018, I um, was involved in a project with the Tate Exchange and Birmingham School of Art, and I created this piece, um, all the projects, all the all the produce of, a, of the land. With um, it was a collaboration with a colleague by the name of Luke Sewell, and he's, he does lino cuts, and we worked, you can see his lino cuts in the background, and we did a Dinkra symbols and um, an image of uh, Queen Nanny. Um, and then in 2019, I was uh, successful, successful in gaining a residency with Bromwood and Grand Union, and at that time, that was coming towards the end of my uh, Black Studies degree, and so I knew that I could kind of fit that in. I wrote, I wrote my application around the idea that it would it would support my dissertation, and that um, I could I could um, present a body of work titled Hymns, um, and in that body of work. So, oh, let me just go back a second. So in that body of work, there were several artifacts, and uh, the dissertation was titled Working Through the Legacy of Colonialism and Personal Trauma Using an Artistic Bricolage and Autoethnography. Auto -ethnogra -eth Easier said than done. Um, yeah, and so um, I did a series of small uh, uh, a series of sort of small portraits and I did assemblage work and the work acted like a polyvocal of different voices that were all speaking to each other all the all the uh, portraits were of civil rights li civil either civil rights speakers or artists that challenged challenged uh, civil rights and the body of work uh, questioned politics religion hierarchy and the themes throughout reflected segments of uh, my black identity from a subjective and social perspective. Um, and finally, in the last piece, um, this, was a, 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 this was a film that was created. Um, it was, it was uh, commissioned through Parallel State and they wanted artists to respond to a new world. And so I created this um, art film, The Breakaway State, which was produced in three parts. So the first and second part was a performance film, and the third part was an artistic, um, uh, uh, it was a narrative um, that took academic writing, looking 
back, it was looking back in, from the future, uh, reflecting back. So there was phase one, two, and three. Um, and yeah, that's that's. Uh, thank you. That's 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 it. I've taken, I've taken um, a few snippets of my artwork, but I couldn't. Obviously, I just took a few pieces. I I could say more about how my artwork has influenced through the Windrush generation. So, so there's artists that I particularly like. Who, but I think yeah. Well, I think we'll leave it at that. Thank mm. you. Fantastic. Welcome, buddy, and there you have an amazing round of applause.